Okay, so I'm going to show uh, and then several moments that can contain that suggest the crux of the film but one I could that I noticed tonight was um, uh, the moment when the person whose film this nominally is asks the person who took the first seven pictures and whose turn it now is to be photographed whether he would like to be photographed in a wide shot or in a close-up. So, um, obviously what I'm getting at is the question of where the decisions are made, um, where what decisions are made um, in relation to other decisions, um, decisions that I made and what the import of that is. And um, I think it's self-evident, but I don't want to insult anyone's intelligence by elaborating, but I'll, I'll mention um, the importance of Saul LeWitt to me, the importance to me of Saul LeWitt, and uh, in paragraphs uh, on conceptual art, he says that um, the idea makes the work. And um, I think he's almost wishing, so to speak, that, that no further human agency were necessary. But, of course, for an idea to be materialized requires labor. Um, and in the case of Saul LeWitt, he emphasizes his wish to omit himself by having art workers, in fact, bring the work into realization as a material fact for us to look at. Um, and another way he omits himself is in the circularity of uh, between the rule and the work. 
So the rule makes possible its elaboration and then it's the rules elaboration in principle allows us to reconstruct the rule that made the work. And what this circularity omits is Lewitt himself, even though he had to have, even though there wouldn't be a work without him, it observes the form of trying to omit him as an origin. And this is an idea that appeals to me greatly. Um, now, I'll, we looked at this film and talked about it in class, and I don't want to repeat myself, and, I, and, and, there's, and I can say something um, new, and that is, I made this film, or this film made itself. Um, that's almost how I think of it. Uh, when I have ideas for films, at least the older ideas, It, the film comes to me as an idea, and the idea is enough to make me understand how, in fact, it will be realized in principle, in all of its details, in principle at least, at the level of a diagram, as I found myself saying a couple of times in different contexts today. And um, I made this film 37 years ago, but only within the last few years did it occur to me to think of it in this way. And that is that it's a case of the ready-made. And by which I'm, and in saying this, I'm relying on not the model of the ready-made as we know it, um, the bottle rack, the urinal, but how Duchamp enlarged on this concept when he talked about how painting is already made because it is a combination of things which are themselves ready made, namely tubes of paint. So in Duchamp's elaboration of the concept of the ready made, um, something made from ready mades is itself a ready made. And this film is a meeting, so to speak, between two industrial, two industrially produced entities, namely a roll of film and a pack of Polaroid film, a roll of motion picture film and a pack of Polaroid still film, the one fitted into the other. And um, I hope I, I hope uh, that I will be, be called upon to defend my claim that this is a ready-made, or that this film can be understood, that it, it's helpful to think of the ready-made in relation to this film as a way of getting, you know, getting, to, an understand, getting to an understanding of it. Um, Now I'll say something else, and it makes me very nervous to say this uh, to this audience, but I'll say it anyway um, so that, again, you can hold me to account for it later on. In my paintings, what interests me above all is abstraction. That's the only thing that interests me. And by abstraction, I mean the absence of an image and the absence of, uh, you know, the absence of representation as we ordinarily think of it, and the absence of a referent, <coughs> and the absence of an image. <coughs> and I used to think I understood what abstraction in painting meant, but I'm not really so sure anymore. Um, 